Hi everyone, in this video, we will focus on the probability of default, one of the key measures of credit risk, introducing different ways to measure it. The probability of default is the likelihood that a borrower, which can be an individual, a corporate or a government, fails to meet its debt obligations within a specified time period. It is a crucial measure for lenders, investors, and financial institutions to assess and manage credit risk. We will focus here on the probability of default for corporates and governments. There are different factors influencing the probability of default of a borrower, such as its credit history, which includes past repayments, its current debt outstanding, potential default, the probability of default is likely to be higher for a borrower with a bad credit history. The financial health of the borrower, including its income, expenses, debt, leverage, and financial stability. The economic conditions, the probability of default is likely to increase when there is an economic downturn. Industry or regional risks, when there is an economic downturn, certain industries or regions can be more affected. There are different ways to assess the probability of default of a company or a government. It can be from a credit rating given by external rating agencies such as S&P, Moody's or Fitch, or obtained internally by banks having developed their own credit rating methodology. It can be from credit scores which gives a numerical representation of the credit worthiness, statistical and machine learning methods such as logistic regression can be used to assess the probability of default from accounting and financial data. The probability of default can also be implied from market data using a default model. Standard & Poor's, Moody's and & Fitch are the three major credit rating agencies, all three are American. They mainly rate corporate financial institutions and countries. Ratings are from AAA, which is the highest rating, to D, which corresponds to default. Ratings have a significant impact, influencing borrowing costs and investment decisions. In this table, we show the ratings of the different agencies. Investment grades correspond to the highest ratings with the lowest probability of default, while speculative grades are the lowest rating with the highest risk of default. Rating agencies publish statistics on their data, including the average default rate through the cycle. Numbers here are purely illustrative. We see that the default probability increases significantly when the credit quality deteriorates. The default rate varies with a higher default rate during crisis periods, allowing to assess default probability over different phases of the economic cycle, we can typically estimate a stressed default probability for crisis periods. Again, numbers here are purely indicative. The credit score is a numerical representation of the credit worthiness. The Altman Z-score is a famous scoring formula for predicting a bankruptcy of corporate first published in 1968 by Edward Altman. It is mostly accounting-based. Here is the original Z-score formula for manufacturing companies. The Z-score of a company is a function of five ratios. The ratios to total assets of the working capital, retained earnings, earnings before interest rates and taxes, and sales and the ratio of the market value of equity to total liabilities. If the Z-score is below 1.81, the company is in distress zone with a higher risk of default, while if the Z-score is above 2.99, the company is in green zone with a low risk of default. The gray zone is in between. The Z-score itself doesn't directly provide a default probability, Empirical studies and historical data can help to estimate a mapping from Z-scores to default probabilities. One approach is to use a logistic regression on historical data of companies' Z-scores and their subsequent default rates to estimate the probability of default. First, we collect historical data of companies with their Z-scores and whether they defaulted or not. Then we fit a logistic regression model and we can estimate the default probability. 
The logistic regression can be done as well using a series of financial data to estimate the default probability. Exploratory data analysis variable selection methods can be used to choose the most relevant variables to be included in the regression. Machine learning classification techniques can be tested as well, such as decision tree, random forest, gradient boosting machines, support vector machines, or neural network. In order to estimate default probabilities from market data, we need a default model. There are two main families. Structural models such as the Merton model are based on the firm's assets and liabilities, while reduced form models focus directly on the timing of default. Structural models are accounting based. The total asset of a company is equal to the sum of its equity and its debt, and there is a default if the total asset of the company goes below its debt. In the Merton model, the company's equity is modeled as a corruption on its asset. We assume that we are in the Black Scholes framework. Without going much more into details in this video, in this framework, the probability of default is a function of five variables the debt market value, the equity market value, the equity volatility, the maturity of the debt, and the risk free interest rate. In reduced form models, defaults occur randomly. The default time is random and is driven by a default intensity process lambda. We assume here that lambda is deterministic. In this framework, the default probability before t can be expressed as a function of the integral of lambda between 0 and t. And it can be shown that if we assume a constant default intensity lambda, we have the credit spread S of the debt, which is close to the product of lambda and 1 minus the recovery rate R. So the default probability before T can be directly expressed from the credit spread if we fix the value of the recovery rate. In this example, we fix the value of the recovery rate at 40%, which is in general the market convention for senior unsecured debts. We assume that we know the five-year credit spread for these five companies. So we can estimate the five-year default probability using the previous formula. And similarly, if we know the value of the one-year credit spread, we can estimate the one-year default probability. Thank you for your time.